Scenery Build the World. This is a Necromunda Scenery Build. This is part three of the Enforcer's Sump Precinct. Uh, this video is going to cover the paintwork and all the fine detailing on the model. Now, before we start though, uh, it's worth pointing out it's the 14th of February, it's Valentine's Day, it's my 150th birthday, and uh, what better way to spend your birthday when, than with a bit of hobby time? So I'm going to be taking this lot indoors very soon because it's freezing out in the workshop to get on with the paintwork. Before I do that though, I've got to thank everybody who's been watching. Um, I've gone through 2,000 subscribers this week, which is absolutely epic. I never thought that Fat Hobby Gandalf was going to get so many people watching his videos. So thanks very much. If you haven't subscribed and this is the first video of mine that you've watched, where on earth have you been? Um, but you know you make up for it now by subscribing and going back and watch some of my other videos. If nothing else, you need to watch part one and part two of this series. Otherwise, you won't know what the hell is going on right here. This video then uh, is going to include a, a number of different areas of finishing this model. Um, obviously, I've got a paint job to do. You can see the model here. It is uh, uh, primed and painted with metallic sprays, but no paint detail. I've got all the details to add inside the admin tower, the resin scenery that I'm going to be using for that for has now arrived. So I've got to equip a med bay and the commander's cabin and that kind of thing. I've got to make lots of little bits to go on this. I also want to put some LED lights into this model. It's going to be pretty straightforward, nothing complicated. Systems that I've used before, but they're going to go in. And as a number of people suggested, and quite rightly so, I'm going to magnetise a couple of bits of this model so I don't keep, if nothing else, knocking them over in play, which is really, really irritating. So there's a hell of a lot to do in this video. Make sure you watch to the end. And then when you do get there, make sure you leave comments for me. Give us a like and all of that kind of stuff. You know what to do. I'm going indoors now, it's too bloody cold out here. Okay, so I thought I would have a go at magnetising part of this model. Several people suggested it, I'm not against it. <laughs> Some people absolutely magnetise everything on their models, which I just haven't got the time for. But putting magnets on the crane, for example, seemed to make sense, because I'm just going to knock it over all the time. I'm either going to wreck it, or it's just going to get out of my wick. <laughs> now, I've bought myself some magnets but I think they might be too small these are three millimeter wide which is fine but they're only half a millimeter thick so they're these tiny silver little discs here but look check it out they're pretty cool obviously at the minute poles wise I've got them both up the same way I can't see any way of telling Which pole is which I've on these little beggars. So I'm going to have to stick one on. I think what I'm going to do, there we go, is I'm going to cut out a bit on this wheel here, cut out a bit here, and a bit on this front wheel, and stick on a couple of magnets. But I've got to make sure I get them the right way around, the same way around, because otherwise it ain't going to work. And we're going to see if that works. I think I might have to get some thicker magnets. Okay, so I've had a cunning idea here. It's my little stack of magnets. One of them, teeny tiny things. These are three millimeter by half a millimeter thick. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sharpie. And I'm going to color the end. And one magnet. Then I'm going to try and remove it from the snack. And then I'm going to colour the next end of the magnet. And that way there I should get the poles right. So they're magnetised together. Do you know, I could probably watch somebody else doing this on YouTube. But I can't be asked. I've got to get on with this. So um, I'm going to figure this out all by myself. Because I'm a grown-up. All right, things I've learned so far. These little red dots. Oh, my magnets, and they're kind of working. Um, they've all got the same poles. Other things I've learned so far. In fact, this is fiddly. Right, so I've cut out a bit in this wheel here, and now I'm going to super glue in a magnet, hopefully the right way around. Um, 
I'm going to do it silver facing down, red facing in there. And I'm going to cut out another slot here, put another one in. And then uh, the four cardinal points on here. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to do them red facing up. I'm going to cut out and stick in there and see if I can magnetize my crane. We're learning, boys and girls. We're learning. Okay, so we might just be able to pick out a little silver disc here and a little silver disc here. Now I'm going to stick magnets onto the track on top of the conning tower of the fortress. Okay, so I can actually cut myself six notches in the wheel. One, two over here, and then at the four points. So I'm now going to apply six magnets into those notches and I'm going to leave them red side up because the uh, ones in the crane are silver side down. And then hopefully that's going to work. I will then leave the super glue for some time to go off to stop the magnets just pulling out of the model, which I'm sure is going to happen otherwise. And if that works, I'll investigate magnetising the odd other bit. And uh, we'll see how we go. Might be worth having magnets on the feet here of the staircase that might be a simple solution rather than sticking it in permanently I don't know I could be about to become a bit of a magnet convert who knows okay let's finish talking about magnets for a few minutes then um this is the magnetized crane it kind of works it does I mean the magnets have certainly made a difference um it doesn't get knocked about so much but my inexperience of using magnets I totally bought the wrong kind of magnets, I think. So my tiny little slivers of magnetic disc that are only half a millimetre thick aren't butch enough for this job. Um, so uh, I'm going to re-magnetise this. I'm going to order some new magnets. Uh, now I'm a bit wiser. Um, probably, I don't know, I don't know what thicknesses are coming, but they need to be at least a millimetre thick or maybe even two millimetres thick, and then that will make a difference. I've magnetised six points. I've got four sets of magnets actually on the bottom of the model, um, uh, the four wheels, so I could turn it around in, in a number of different directions, um, which it does kind of work, but I don't have enough connections, and the magnets just aren't chunky enough. Um so they don't really, really stop this kind of getting knocked about too much, you know. So from that point of view, I still want to experiment more with magnets, but I need bigger, better magnets. So I might do a magnet update at some point when I do another model, um, and we'll see how we go. I will magnetise the water tower, um, I think. That's probably going to be, oh, I'll just stick the damn thing on. Uh, but I quite fancy magnetising the bridge because I like the idea of being able to take that off the model. Um, and uh, so from that point of view, uh, I am going to magnetise that. That isn't going to happen in this video because I want to get this video done. But uh, I am going to use bigger, chunkier magnets. So my first foray into magnetising isn't 100% successful. But hey, you know, that's the whole point of this hobby. Um and doing all this myself, I haven't got time to go and watch loads and loads of other people's videos. Uh, so I'm kind of experimenting as I go. Um, so if you've got experience of magnetising, chuck it my way. I'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours of my life magnetising all my Necromunda figures. Cannot be asked with that at all whatsoever. I like actually making a figure, sticking it together and going with it. Um, but magnetising bits of scenery just to stop it getting knocked about, either when I carry it from here inside or when I'm playing, that seems to make a lot of sense to me. Okay, time to paint this bad boy. Prime black. Sprayed with a, some metallic colour or another. Now, I need to start rusting it up. I'm concerned I'm going to run out of Warm Fang Brown pretty bloody quick. I'm going to use some technical paints first of all to add some more rust texture. Sterling mud is the thing. I'm going to go from there. Sorry about the background noise. That's the expanse. So the texture on the model started off with super glue by carbonate soda, giving us this rust here. I've now added a load of sterling mud, which will give us a load more texture. 
I'm now going to paint the, some of the larger panels in the same blue, which is Cantor blue, over the dark undercoat to give it kind of the same kind of paint job as my other enforcer vehicles and enforcers. And then I'm going to rough it all up and make it all manky. But I want it to look kind of like it had been once upon a time would have been the pride and joy over the uh, shore division. And now, like everything else, it's just grotty and horrible and rotting away on the sump. So let's get the blue out and then we're going to rust up the whole thing. Well, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how this paint job's going at the minute. It's going to look grotty and grimy, mind you. So uh, I suppose that's part of it. So, so far, I've mostly used more Fang Brown dry brush, which is really heavy. And I've used Nuln Oil and Agrax Earthshade and Baltan Green Shades. I'm going to stop picking out detail, I suppose, when this is all completely dry. I haven't really done much in the accommodation block. Okay, so the lighting in here is not exactly ideal, but the paint job is kind of coming on. A bit bored with it already, actually, to be quite honest. It's a lot of metal. There are some nice blue touches. We added some colour to the crane. Some reds and some golds in there. Uh, and a water tower on the top. Blues to go with the Enforcer colour scheme. Rusts, blues, and then some kind of green in the Promethean and that red as well. So it's coming on. I need to add the sump water. That really helps set it off. And then I need to add a load of. Nurgle's Rot and some gloss uh, gloss known oil as well and I think that's going to be the main part of the paint job done um, no detail in the rooms yet got to add all the details that's the next bit, start adding all the physical details in the armory and on the med mech's workshop and in the med bay and that kind of thing. We're getting there. So here's a quick paintwork update. In some ways, I'd love to say that I'm kind of finished, but I'm totally not. Um, but it is presentable from a tabletop point of view. I could quite happily now stick this on a table and, and play on it. It's, it's at that level. But there's still quite a lot I want to do. You can see now I've added some water, um, all greens and murky greens and a few leery greens and bits and pieces. It works quite well. Um, and with the... Uh, sump speeder down there. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Gloss Mod Podge I mixed in with the acrylic has given it quite a nice kind of sheen to that. Yeah, in fact, so much so that I need to go back to my sump speeder, I think, and kind of like uh, gloss that to make that look a bit slicker. The crane uh, looks pretty nice. I like the colours there. I've gone back and then filled with some Iron Warriors. Uh, metallics in for some of that so it's not quite as uh all brown and rusty um the front tower is pretty good um but still not stuck in place so <clears throat> although i think i could put this on the table now and go yep that's ready to play there's still a hell of a lot of work to do because i've got to do all the detailing the new roof that i made for the commander's cabin uh, he's completely unpainted, it's just primed and metallic. 
Um, and now I want to get on and actually put in some of the detail into this model because there's no interior detail. And if you've gone this far making this model, I might as well go with the detail side of things as well. So now we're going to go digging through the cack. We're going to go looking for details for the uh, mechanics uh, work area down here. We're going to go... And some of it's not cack. I've ordered it. It's resin stuff. I've got to work up stuff for the med bay, for the armory, and also for the commander's cabin. So there's a lot to do still with this video. Okay, let's crack on. Right, small details and additions then is where we're at. Um, like I said, I've got to do the, the mech area and the med bay and that kind of thing. But one of the things I'm also going to do... And um, one of the things I'm going to do this for is because I really like now the way my uh, subscribers that kind of like the Magrathia community now start to chip into some of these builds. Um, a long time subscriber and follower, Hetz of Fiend, wanted to know if I was going to have some kind of power unit for this last cannon that's underneath the archway. Because actually, yeah, it's pretty tricky to see how a big heavy weapon like this will be powered. So thanks for that. I'm going to have a look now at adding some stuff. From a bits box i think what i might do is actually look to add um another floor panel back here some description with some kind of thing representing a power unit underneath and that will power the twin link las cannon so that's one of the things that i'm going to go digging through the cac for CAC. a suitable thing that will make up a power generator maybe for my las cannons underneath that entrance arch too so um this is all very organised uh, and might not be that much help, this little lot. There are bits and pieces that are pretty cool. There are these things. I've got to paint you one of these. That's off the servo hauler things. Um, but there is a receptacle to take one of those over above the engineer, so I'm definitely going to need one of those. Uh, powery, powery, powery units. Nothing really says powery unit in that one, though. Um, let's have a look in another box. Get rid of that. Right, so these are not from my main cack boxes. My main cack boxes are um, all uh, uh, out in the garage. These are ones that are my main Necromunda cack boxes now that I've sorted through previously and got all sorts of suitable trash in. So from that point of view, I hope to uh, hit gold one way or another. Don't know though, I'm not holding out much hope for this power thing. I might have to go and look in the, the real full-on cack boxes for that. I just want something that looks like it's a you know, power generating thing that I can attach with some cables and stuff. Um, it's a drilly kind of arm for a servitor, maybe. Uh, now that's cool. That is, I might actually have to use that on that. This um, uh, is the uh, is a thing from the last version of Space Hulk or the one before. I can't remember. But that's pretty cool. That's definitely going to go on here. Little kind of engineering type bot. That's very neat. Uh, do need a ladder to go up the top. So we'll have that out while we're here. Uh, yeah, how about that? I don't know what that is. Is that power unit enough? Well, it could kind of like, I mean, it's a bit of a not very 40k shape to be quite honest. It's too kind of round and not jaggedy enough, but it might do. I'll have a play with that. See what else I can see. More cack needed. <laughs> Heads of fiend. Challenge accepted. I love the thought about needing actually to have some power from your last cannon. Um, so what I'm going for is this. I think this is a, um, a wall top from the Gang Fortress set. And I'm going to go with this uh, set of chains and hooks and bits and pieces, actually, because I quite like the idea of the engineer being able to have an area that he can raise and lower um, uh, kit engines and bits and pieces out of vehicles and stuff. So, but the key thing to this is, remember, this is all about a power unit. I've got this. Check it out. I think it's certainly orky. Uh, I, I think that actually might be a Gasgall Mac Uruk Thracker mark ii body i think as opposed to just any old knob um but i reckon that 
stuck in here, maybe this way round, stuck in there, and then with some other bits on it to uh, power it up. I found, I also found this X, this extremely old uh, plastic Terminator back was great set of vents on it. So I might mount that on there somehow. Actually, Jesus, look at that. That's awesome. <laughs> Uh, this has not been pre-prepared either, kids. This is just kind of like as it's coming out of me. Um, so I might stick that on there. That will have a, light, a little thing like that. And then I could get a couple of other bits, control panel bits. This is an ancient thing off a of old original 1988 or so old war wagon. Um, that might go on there somehow for a control point of view. Um, and then the odd bit of pipe. And then I reckon we're away. So the idea is then that I'm going to, look at this is all bloody painted and this isn't, um, I'm going to have to paint this up obviously, uh, but I'll put that over here like that, why does that work, and that will give us extra kind of like, um, an extra platform over the back with the hook hanging down here for the engineer's benefit, and then I'll have the power unit hanging underneath Close enough to the double las twin link las cannon to make it look like it's all part of the same thing. And I'll link it with some pipe work from one place or another. I reckon that will work. That will look really, really cool. So um, leave that with me. Thank you very much, Hetzafine, for that idea. That, people, is one of the reasons why I really like having this channel and having this community that we're building now. Um, because these kind of ideas come up i haven't got all the ideas you guys are chucking them at me and i'm trying to assimilate and use whatever i can which is really really cool so um you can stop chucking ideas at me now for this bill because i'm fucking fed up with them right nice one guys let's get on with this right now this is stuff that i haven't had to go digging much through the cack for because some of this is kind of like bought in or was on sprues that i knew i was going to use so over here uh we've got bits that are going to go in the armory these were bought in from anstey casting so they are actually kind of they are lockers um that are going to go in the locker room um along with weapon racks and then a bench for guardsmen to sit on over here we've got stuff that is going in the med bay here and a medic bed or uh, of some description plus there's a, a desk and a, a set of um a, kind of like a bookcase set of shelves kind of thing with medical stuff on it this is from mantic the med bed again is an angsty casting um little model then down here we've got a couple of bits that are going to go out in the uh mechs area both from the space orc mech boys workshop there's some other bits of that I might use too. So these are the things I'm going to start working with. What else have I got? I've also made out, out in the mix area. I've taken oil drums and Promethean power units and uh, fuel canisters and stuck them on a spare uh, top like that um, with bits cut off because that's going to make a handy move aroundable piece of scatter terrain um, or fuel tanks and bits and pieces. So this is the kind of level of detail I'm going for in these areas. Through a few things that will help me um, definitely kind of identify different areas of the vessel without too much bother. I bought a servitor this week, a couple of servitors. Um, here we go. I'm going to convert this guy up, put him on a proper base, uh, and give him a, a suitable arm. I'm going to have him as a mech mechanic servitor working down on the uh, engineer deck. Uh, and there's another one that I'm going to hold on to as well. So none of that, I had to actually go digging through the CAC for that. It was stuff that I knew I had in my organised sci-fi spares or stuff that I've bought in um, this week. So uh, I'm going to put that to one side. And now I am actually going to go digging through the CAC. I'm looking for weapons and bits and pieces that can go on the weapon racks in the armory. I'm looking for any other bits of stuff that would work quite well in the med bay. I'm looking for other bits that would work well in the engineers kind of like area. And also, I'm working looking for stuff that will go in the commander's cabin too. Um, so there's still quite a lot of little bits there. And what I'm going to do is stick those together like this piece of scatter terrain. Assemble those and probably paint those separately and then stick them in place 
uh, in the model because, although, you know, you've seen the size of this model. It's just too damn fiddly to try and get a paintbrush around. So, uh, without further ado, let's go and dig in that cack and see what we can find. Right, so here are the details that I'm going to be adding to this model. Um, you have to be pretty tricky, I think, when adding details to a model like this because what you don't want to do is overcomplicate it and make it too damn fiddly but you do want to make enough stuff on there to actually give it plenty of character this is my power unit for the las cannon i need to um add a couple of pipes i think coming out of here with nothing else running into either side um it's got that f uh free floating uh chain system haul, uh, haul, haulage system for taking engines and bits and pieces out the back of vehicles as well so that's going to float quite nicely on there um then over here we've got the locker room for the uh enforcers these are the the weapon racks going to go on the wall in the locker room um we've got storm the kind of right shields there and other weapons and bits and pieces that will all look pretty cool hanging up and give a different texture to that wall in there um We've then got a few lockers uh, that will keep some of their kit in. And I've added a couple of spare subjugator helmets to the top of that locker just to give it a bit more of a, a 40k kind of feel. Then there's a little bench for sitting down and doing your boots up. You always, always need somewhere to sit and do your boots up. The lockers and the bench are from Ainsley Castings, of course. And then there's a little computer display. I think that's Mantic Games. I could be wrong. But that's going to go on one of the walls as well. So that's the locker room. Then... Down here, we have the med bay, uh, the Ainsty Castings med bed, uh, and a couple of mantic bits of scenery, a space marine, an old space marine med pack, um, a couple of various bits of gunk, and then a med type character from the uh, Kill Team Rogue Trader set. Uh, I reckon she looks pretty cool. That's, um, you know, we need to have a proper dedicated uh, medic on board so she's going on there so with the uh, mechanic then we've got this pile of fuel canisters and bits and pieces we've got some tools from the york mech boy workshop um we then have this uh ancient piece of archaeotech little kind of like dude from space hulk really like that that's a very handy bit of kit for getting underneath and inside engines and what have you. Um, then I have made uh, the engineer, chief engineer of the vessel. It doesn't go out on patrol anymore. This is Halford, um, made with a subjugator mostly, but he's got um, Orlock arms. And a, uh, so he's got that cool kind of Orlocky power fist, very useful. And a very, very, very old Space Orc drill. Plus, he also has a servitor to help him out. Uh, this is his servitor quick fit um, and so he's going to have to get painted as well and then the only other thing I've got the details wise on here are, is this little pile of stuff down here on the right which is a couple of uh, water tanks and some searchlights and bits and pieces just general ephemera to go on the body of the vessel so uh, I think you'll agree that's quite a lot of painting I need to do so I'm going to crack on with this as soon as I can uh, and try and get as much of this painted and onto the model as possible. I really, really, really am getting excited about seeing this model finished now. So from that point of view, um, don't hang around here. I'm going to go and crack on with the painting. All right, when I look at all those details on there, I might be regretting this. Oh, we're nearly finished kind of statement because uh, it still looks like quite a lot of painting to me. Um, so now it's going to be a lot of metallic tones and dry brushing stuff. And I like this resin gear because it's going to give me an opportunity to put some different colours inside the model okay so um waiting for the undercoat on all the details to finish so i'm going to add a bunch of washes uh onto this um, i'm going to add some more known oil and some agrax earth shade and then some nurgles rot and maybe have a go in some cases with i can't even say that nihilac oxide do you say it? I don't know. Some verdigris stuff. Let's see if I can do that too. And then I really need to pick out some details of some of these control panels. <laughs> Way too many control panels on this. 
let's have a look see what we can do just want to keep adding to the kind of oily grimy-ness of this model so far accompanied by the very excellent tv series firefly episode two the train job Okay, this is a tricky part now because it's taking ages, but they're starting to stick things in there. The weapon racks in the armory are quite pleased with. This over here is the med bay that's coming on. There's an LED light holder in there. Bed and shelves. Uh, I've got lockers here to go in the uh, uh, locker room along with the armory and a little bench for enforcers to sit on and I haven't yet stuck this up on the entrance we're nearly there oh plus figures painting I don't think I'm going to get them done before I'm going to call this model finished because they're crew so I'm going to keep painting them I don't want to rush them so I'll have them done to a certain degree so I can get this video finished right let's have a look at some of the details then a late addition uh, to the detailing I've done, of course, with this model is now the wire mesh that is in the uh, bridge there. I'd always intended to do that. And to be honest, it does need a bit of weathering, a bit of rusting up, maybe even a, the odd hole. Um, but uh, I think that looks pretty cool. It's fairly large mesh. You can see in there quite nicely. That's pretty groovy. So there's the bridge. Um, that looks quite nice. I like that feature there. All wire mesh, nice and secure for whoever's in charge looking out there. Um, again, I could add a few more details to that. I need to get in there and paint the computer screens for bits and pieces, I suppose. Let's go and have a look over in the engineers section then. So this is uh, another nice little detailed area. This is the mechanics area, or the engineers area on the main vehicle deck. Um, we've got my little kind of scutter type bit of kit and that cool piece of scatter terrain with the uh, various fuel cells and bits and pieces and then you can just see the chief engineer uh halford talking to quick fit the servitor uh, vehicle repairer and uh, we made good use of the mech boy tools there big box of spanners and the, the tool rack on the side um i think this area is going to be another area i'm just going to find little things and keep adding to it i want to put a couple of fire extinguishers in there for a start um i'll keep coming back to that area i'm sure a lot of the mech boys workshop stuff is just too big and chunky actually to go in there but i'm going to find other things as we go along it's pretty cool it has also got the hand, a handy window down the under here for shooting out the back of the ship too and our kind of like welder on the uh uh arm over the top which is also quite useful so quite a nice little vignette area uh taking photographs and bits and pieces from it's quite cool okay let's have now then a look inside the admin tower on the back of the vessel locker facilities lockers here and a little bench down the side there and actually i'm gonna have to turn this back now because my favorite feature in the locker room actually Oh, those two weapon racks, they look really cool. Um, by the time we take a patrolman and stand him in there, they're a decent height and size. I think I really, really, really want to get some more enforcers uh, just for the the, uh, the fun of having some kind of like guys who aren't out on patrol who are kind of like mooching around and on some downtime. We do have a cell then here right next to the locker room area, um, which is totally empty. I was going to put furniture in it, but hey, prisoners, pff, they can sit on the floor. Um, that would make uh, a really cool kind of location for a scenario. There's a doorway just down here to get out and another doorway, of course, over here. So there are multiple ways in. Um, it'll be quite a cool scenario to kind of like get into. And then, and then here is the uh, med bay. Um, I am actually in the process of painting a, a medic. I've used the medic -y type character from um, 40k kill team road trader. Um, but she's not finished because uh, <laughs> I just ran out of time painting figures for this because it's been such a humongous job, which has got uh, uh, 
a bed in it and then a set of shelves with all various bits of kit over here. Uh, uh, this is an analysis computer uh, with full on diagram and the rest of it. Um, um, spare first aid kit, med pack there as well. One of the problems with this model is it's so big that I have to film from quite a long way away to get it all in the picture. I've got to say I'm really, really pleased with this model. Um, I think it's going to be a bit like the fourth bridge. It's never going to be finished. I'm just going to be kind of like adding to it all the time. But uh, it's been a very, very satisfying build for me to do from the initial outset. Hey, let's take a Playmobil toy and see what we can do with it to this is um, extremely satisfying. Uh, there's not much left of the Playmobil toy underneath it. You will recognize as a Playmobil toy. Um, it's provided a really excellent base for a model. I'm very, very happy. I'm also delighted that I've now finished it and I can get on and make something else. So there you go. That's by far the biggest build that I've done so far for Necromunda. The completed Enforcers Precinct 13 uh, from the Pier Town Shore Division. <laughs> In truth, it isn't really finished. I think this is a model that I'm going to keep coming back to time and time again. I had a crack, as we've seen, with magnetising some of the features on this. It kind of works, but I'm not happy with it, and I'm going to go back and order some bigger, stronger magnets to hold the crane on, um, and I haven't yet magnetised the main bridge over between the two sides. I think that would just be a damn sight easier if that's magnetised rather than stuck in from a, a getting to figures point of view and gameplay. So that's definitely, definitely going to happen. I'm going to come back and add more details there's so many different things that i can actually add on to this model it's really really cool i've cut um uh, two more led holders uh which are going to go on the side of the vessel one on each side as navigation lights so green and red for port and starboard that will actually help in darkness um shoots which i want to do i want to get some film and photographs uh we're lighting up the outside of the ship as well um and i haven't added spotlights so I'm going to come back and add more details as we go. Um, I haven't put the ladder on to get up to this main platform over the entrance. Um, but I have wanted to get it done. I want to add more crew. I have converted up specifically uh, three or four members of crew, two servitors and an engineer and the medic who isn't finished painted. Um, but I also would like a couple more uh, crew models for this uh and uh you know another patrol vehicle versus other bits and pieces too uh this could become quite a large force mine forces after covid's done i'd love to think i could actually round up a few people and have a campaign uh i'd run as as uh, an arbitrator um and have an enforcers a force as the arbitrators kind of like weapon uh to go and take them on so uh, lots of enforcers i've got happy to paint up another um sump rider and uh, patrol crew uh so thanks very much for watching three videos on the construction of the sump fortress um i hope you've enjoyed watching all of those it's been quite a lot of footage there and i've had some amazing feedback from people as we've gone along there is in fact a fourth video a short video that i've made purely about the detailing of the commander's cabin that i haven't included really any of that in this video um, so there will be a few pieces in there I think you'll quite enjoy seeing. So that is probably going to be a midweek video. I'm going to chuck that out. It's not going to be a very long one, not a mammoth one like these big videos, uh, but a bit of extra footage and detail to go with this build. Um, there's going to be plenty more Necromunda uh, builds to come in the next few months. Uh, this model alone has spawned so many ideas and so many subscribers have made suggestions as to other things that I should be doing out on the sump. And that's definitely the direction I'm going to be going. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, then make sure you do. I mean, you know, what are you thinking? I don't get it, but, you know, do subscribe. Otherwise, you are going to miss other Necromunda sump builds um, and see where I go with this project. The next video is full on video with this for that I will be producing, though, is probably going to be um, a commission build for uh, fancy model 
um, for Burrows and Badgers, a large build that I'm going to be doing um, in three stages. So there's going to be a number of videos for that. And I'm dying to get my teeth into building some Judge Dredd stuff to do some sci-fi, um, but with a completely different aesthetic. I know I I love the grim dark of Necromunda, but I'd like to go and do something a bit kind of like quirky um, and comic booky, which of course is what Mega City One is all about. So again, make sure you subscribe, or you're going to miss out on those too. Please do leave comments down below. I love getting seeing what you guys think of my model making. Um, if you would like to be a guest cack digger or are interested in digging through the cack t-shirts, find me on Facebook or come and ask me in my community pages. Hey, we discovered that Magathea Builder Worlds has got a community out there too, which has been pretty obvious from the way you guys have been chatting on my videos. But it's great that you've actually kind of like gone on there too. So if you want to know about t-shirts, go find me there. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I love actually doing this. Um, I've had so much encouragement for people. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.